The enigmatic Mayan civilization has left behind an abundance of unsolved enigmas, captivating us with their remarkable advancements in various fields such as astronomy, mathematics, medicine, architecture, and art. Among their extraordinary accomplishments, the Mayan calendar stands as an emblem of breathtaking precision. However, delve further into their lives and prepare to be astounded by a lesser-known aspect that will leave you speechless. In a quest to attain unparalleled beauty, the Maya traversed unparalleled lengths, making them an unparalleled society in terms of their dedication to aesthetic perfection. Their relentless pursuit of physical attractiveness verged on obsession, leading some to credit them as pioneers of what we now know as plastic surgery. Brace yourself for the revelation that will send chills down your spine. Watch the whole video to the end for the best part. Throughout the Mayan civilization, mothers possessed a remarkable skill of crafting their offspring into exquisite beauties and strikingly handsome individuals. However, the methods employed often appeared more akin to instruments of torment than nurturing. Corn, the primary crop in Central America, held divine significance in the eyes of the Maya. Its value was so profound that even the standards of beauty were characterized by an elongated head, resembling the shape of a corn cob. The Spanish chronicler, Diego de Landa, vividly detailed the extraordinary procedure employed by the Maya to achieve this peculiar cranial form. Envision a tender infant cradled within a structure delicately woven from twigs. With precision, two boards were skillfully placed upon their delicate head, exerting intense pressure as they were painfully manipulated downwards. After several agonizing days, the infant's skull would be transformed, leaving it flat and conforming to the desired shape shared by their community. Remarkably, the Maya attributed this peculiar practice to the teachings of their divine ancestors, believing that the resulting cranial deformation bestowed upon them an air of nobility, elevating their appearance in the eyes of the gods. Interestingly, ethnographers propose that these cranial modifications may have served a practical purpose as well. They speculate that altering the shape of the skull made it more convenient to attach straps for carrying bundles on the forehead. Given the absence of beasts of burden in Mayan culture, individuals bore the weight of their cargo by securing it to their heads. Thus, the cranial modifications, while motivated by beauty standards, may have inadvertently provided a practical advantage in the daily logistics of the Maya civilization. The distinctive shape of Mayan heads gave birth to equally extraordinary headdresses. While not every commoner could afford lavish adornments, the aristocrats reveled in displaying their opulence to one another. Among rulers and high priests, these headdresses reached such remarkable proportions that they often surpassed their owners in height. Rather than being worn atop the head, these massive headdresses were attached to belts and shoulders. These magnificent creations, adorned with feathers, precious gemstones, ribbons resembling corn cobs, masks depicting jaguars, and even mythical creatures, showcased an awe-inspiring splendor. However, it is no surprise that maneuvering in such elaborate headdresses proved to be challenging. The assortment of forms, materials, and compositions seemed limitless, encompassing turbans, tiaras, plumes, crowns, and wide-brimmed hats. What makes it even more intriguing is that despite donning such extravagant headdresses, the Maya would often walk clad only in a small loincloth, choosing to embrace their nakedness while allowing their elaborate headpieces to captivate all who beheld them. Another important sign of beauty was a large eagle nose. Here, too, the Maya used plastic surgery. They wore special squeeze frames, which over time changed the shape of the nose, and brought the shape of the nose to perfection with the help of clay, sticking missing volumes. Another peculiar beauty standard, now being actively discarded, was strabismus. Strabismus was considered a distinctive trait of aristocratic appearance. Based on the detailed accounts of Mayan life left by the Spanish monk Diego de Landa, girls would deliberately induce strabismus by attaching a pebble to their hair, positioned just above the midpoint of their eyebrows. As the pebble swung back and forth, children would constantly raise their eyes, eventually causing them to develop a squint. However, as these squint-eyed beauties matured, there was no shortage of suitors vying for their affections, ensuring a guaranteed marriage. This tradition had roots in antiquity. The squinting effect aimed to resemble the deity Itzama, the creator of the world, who was depicted with a slanted gaze, a prominent nose, and a single tooth in his mouth. The Maya believed that Itzama bestowed knowledge of how to cultivate the land and imparted invaluable craftsmanship to humanity. Among the Maya, natural beauty held little value, as it was the vibrant and unconventional that garnered admiration. 
the more striking and rugged, the better. Rather than relying on cosmetics, they embraced body tattoos, a practice accompanied by excruciating pain. The process involved first painting the skin and then making incisions, posing a significant risk of infection and even death. These incisions left behind intricate geometric patterns as permanent scars. The extent of these tattoos served as a testament to a man's bravery and valor, with those adorned with numerous tattoos considered highly courageous. Women, too, partook in this custom, adorning their bodies with tattoos, excluding the breasts. Even the supreme rulers of the Maya covered themselves in tattoos, nearly from head to toe. However, their pursuit of beauty did not end there. On religious holidays, the Maya embellished their bodies with colors, each hue corresponding to a specific event or social status. Blue denoted the priests, while black and red were reserved for warriors. But that's not all. The Maya paid great attention to their teeth, with distinctive ideals of beauty in this regard as well. Diego de Landa notes that it was fashionable for women to modify their teeth, with the desired aesthetic being teeth resembling the fine points of a saw. This was achieved through the use of specialized stones that were employed to file and shape the teeth. Archaeological evidence indicates that the teeth were sharpened on one side and deliberately dulled on the other. Interestingly, the Maya possessed remarkable dental and medical practices, surpassing the advancements of their European counterparts. They even went as far as carving holes in their teeth and embedding precious gemstones into them, adding an extra element of adornment to their dental aesthetics. The Mayans were driven by a fervent desire to alter every aspect of their natural form, encompassing not only their teeth, heads, and noses, but even extending to the male genitalia. In their pursuit of a more refined shape, they utilized a specialized device worn over an extended period of time. Remarkably, the Maya possessed a highly advanced medical system, particularly excelling in the fields of surgery and anatomical knowledge. Surgeons skillfully performed procedures using obsidian knives and employed human hair for sutures. They were adept at intricate operations such as skull trepanation and facial plastic surgery. Curiously, the Maya regarded tobacco as a panacea for various ailments and considered tamper droppings to be highly effective remedies. Additionally, urine therapy was embraced as a readily accessible procedure for therapeutic purposes. And the champion of the ranking for the most unconventional beauty standards goes to piercing. One might argue that it's no big deal considering the prevalence of piercing in today's society, with earrings being a common adornment for almost all women. However, the Mayans managed to astonish everyone yet again in this realm as well. Apart from the customary piercings in the ears, nose, and lips, the Maya took it a step further by piercing their tongues and genitals. In these instances, the piercings served not merely as decorative accessories, but rather as offerings and sacrifices to the gods. The responsibilities of the king and queen encompassed a rather peculiar practice of public bloodletting. During specific ceremonial occasions, the monarch would engage in the piercing of their tongue or genitals using a unique stingray spike. However, a single puncture was not the extent of this ritual. A rope adorned with thorns was also inserted into the tongue and stretched to induce further bleeding. These actions were carried out by the rulers themselves, exclusively. Moreover, multiple incisions were made on the genitals, with the resulting blood being employed to moisten a cloth that would later be set ablaze. It was firmly believed that this act served as a sacrifice to appease the gods. It was entrusted that through such bloodletting, the ruler established a connection with the divine forces and attained hidden wisdom essential for the well-being of their people. Nevertheless, the common folk were not exempt from subjecting themselves to such self-inflicted torment. Therefore, men belonging to a particular clan regularly participated in a ritual known as stringing. This practice involved even more exotic variations of bloodletting. Men would pierce their genitals horizontally and vertically, then thread a lengthy rope through the openings, binding themselves in a manner reminiscent of the umbilical cord connecting them to the universal mother. This rite held immense significance in preserving the clan's unity, with the clan itself playing a paramount role in Mayan society. Remarkably, even after the arrival of the Spaniards, this Mayan ritual endured. In one account provided by a monk, it is noted that the one who performed it most frequently was deemed the most courageous. Astonishingly, their sons began engaging in this ritual from a tender age. However, the most unsettling aspect was their inherent inclination towards it. Although it may appear barbaric and gruesome to us, 
the Maya firmly believed that the world itself was brought into existence through this very ritual among the gods. By partaking in these acts, they sought to exhibit profound reverence and unity with their deities. Such were the mesmerizing and unconventional mores and customs observed by the Maya. Despite the undeniable cruelty within their culture, including the practice of human sacrifice, the Maya achieved a remarkable level of civilization, often surpassing the developments of their European counterparts in numerous facets of their society. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.